Okay, let's start. Um, I'd like to go over conversion of units to ML, okay, especially with insulin. This is a very common mistake by medical professionals, specifically nurses. I don't want you to have the same mistake, okay? So I'd like to cover this. That's one, one of the reasons. Number two, it is a common question in board exams. You may not see it on the final exam, but it is very common for board exam, okay? A couple of things I'd like you to know, okay? When converting insulin, okay, the unit that we use for insulin is units. You will see them as capital U, okay? However, ISMP and TJC suggest that to avoid using the capital U, instead write the word units, okay? To avoid medication error, because look at the capital U, it may be mistaken as a zero too if you write it fast, okay? So conversion factor would be 100 units is equivalent to one ML. You will usually see it as the letter U, capital U, okay? And know that one ML, is the same as one cc. Is that clear? It is very common to hear cc, which stands for cubic centimeter, in the UK. Okay, so do not be confused. One ml is equivalent to one cc. Okay, I've encountered some um, nurses who don't know this conversion, especially if they're just starting out. So I like to, I'd like to mention it to you that one ml is equivalent to a cc. A milliliter is equivalent to a cubic centimeter. That clear? Okay. Here is a regular syringe. Okay, I'll open it. This is a five ml syringe. I'd like to show you. I don't know how close I could get, okay? but you will see that the major lines are one ml increments, okay? And in between the major lines are four lines, which means each line is equivalent to what? So if there are four lines, then there goes your one ml mark, your two ml mark, your three ml mark, each little line corresponds to how much then? Correct, 0 0.2. This is a five ml syringe. Oops, be very careful. Okay, why? A three ml syringe would have different increments. It can be nine lines before the major line, 0.1. So when you're doing the IV certification, you wanna count how many little lines are there before the major line, because that's how we can fail the IV certification test, okay? Some students thought that every single line is 0.2, not always the case. For a five ML, yes, it's 0.2, okay? For a three ML, it'll be 0.1. Okay, so be very careful with that. But this is how a regular syringe looks like, okay? And I'd like to show you, you gotta loosen it up because it's tight, okay? What an insulin looks like, I'll share my screen. So you have an idea. It's thinner. Can you see my screen? It's thinner. Okay. It's in units, you see? 10, 20, 30, up to 100 units. <coughs> Bless you. Which means the capacity of that insulin syringe, if it's 100 units, is what? Type it in the chat box. If that's a 100 unit syringe, insulin syringe, one ml, correct, okay. Now for sample computations, 
because this comes out on the board exam, okay? It may be a couple of questions on the board exam. Why? This is not only math, this is patient safety. We're talking about patient safety here, okay? So this may come up as a question, multiple questions, okay? Can you hear me properly? Okay, I'll share another screen and I chose two good examples as discussed by, I don't know him personally, Dan Ozimek, but I wanna give credits to um, whoever made the video. I'll share my screen again, this one. Can you see it? Yes, okay. Is it a better view? Because I put it on theater mode this time. I think it will be nicer on your computer or on your phone. Okay, ready? Two examples on the calculation of insulin. Okay. In this order, we are asked to administer Humalog U100, 78 units, subcut daily at 7.30 a.m. We need to determine how much we need to administer and what syringe we would use. The first thing to notice is we are talking about Humalog, which is insulin. And it's not just any particular type of interest insulin, it is U100, which specifically tells us that this Humalog has 100 units per 1 ml. So every milliliter of this drug contains 100 units. Now, because insulin is often administered at home by the, by the person who needs it, uh, there needed to be a nice and easy way for individuals to administer and calculate and administer the drug themselves. So there are what we call U100 syringes. And these U100 syringes are labeled with units. So, so far in this module, we have seen syringes that measured milliliters. But what we're going to be seeing when we're talking about insulin are syringes that are specifically calibrated for U100. And instead of filling them up to a milliliter count, we're filling them up to a unit count. So what makes that great is when you see U100, you know all we need to do is to figure out, one, how many units you need to administer. So how many units you need to administer. And once you figure out how many units, you need to determine then what syringe you use. And once you have that, you are done. Uh, and because we're dealing with a paper and pencil test and we're not necessarily actually filling syringes, we're also going to want to label and shade those syringes. So let's just answer these two short questions. We know we're dealing with U100, which is important. How many units of U100 do we need to administer? According to this, we need to ad administer 78 units. And now we need to choose the syringe. We know immediately that a three milliliter syringe is not appropriate because we're not measuring milliliters, we're measuring units. So now we have 100 units or 50 units. Well, 78 units do not fit in a 50 unit syringe. So I'm going to measure and mark 78 units on my 100 unit syringe. We can see that it goes up by twos, 70 and then two, four, six, eight. So I will draw a line right here at 78. I will specifically write 78 units to let whoever is reading this know that this is what I have marked, 78 units, and I will shade up to that point. The key thing to remember once again is we are dealing with U100. There are no conversions needed when we are dealing with U100. A common mistake is for students to use the 100 units per milliliter, convert it into milliliters, and label a milliliter syringe. That would be inappropriate to do because we have calibrated U100 syringes. If we were dealing with U500 insulin, which we'll see coming up, there's a little bit more we need to do. But let's look at the next example. We see Novolin regular U100, we need to administer 45 units subcut, which should only be one subcut, at 7.30.
which syringe do we use and how much do we administer? And we're told what's available to us is U100 and it's units, 100 units per one milliliter. If you wanna pause the video now and try this on your own, please do. I'm going to look at this and see I'm talking about insulin. It is U100 insulin. And as soon as I see U100, I do not need to do a conversion. So okay, so I'll pause it for a minute. I'd like you to solve this problem based on the first example. Let's see, okay? Alexa, set my timer for 60 seconds. One minute, starting now. Subcut means Julio. Subcutaneous. Subcutaneously means Maria. Subcutaneous. What does it mean? Because if you say subcutaneous, Alexa, stop. If you say subcutaneous, to average people, they don't know what that means. So what does it mean? Like just under the skin? Just underneath the skin, very good. Okay, we're ready? You have your answers? Okay, let's see if your answer is correct. Give me answers. My Shauna, you have an answer? Let's see. Type in your answer so I can see. Type in your answers in the chat box now, real quick. Okay, real quick, real quick, let's see. Marlene, you there? We do administer 45 units. And then the second question is, what syringe? Immediately, I see that this one ML syringe is not going to be needed. I need a syringe that measures units. And down here, I have two calibrated U100 syringes. And I see here that 45 units, that's going to fit on my 50 unit syringe. So I will shade up to 45 and I will mark 45 units. And that's it. Okay, say for example, you don't have the units, the syringes and units, okay? It's going to be, you're gonna be using a regular syringe, which we don't usually recommend. So say for example, okay? And you're given 60 units to administer, okay? 60 units, so I'll put that here. 60 U. How much is that in milliliter? How much is that in milliliter? 0 0.6 ml is correct, or 0 0.6 cc, okay? But we use an insulin syringe to administer insulin, okay? And remember that an insulin syringe is in units already. Okay, there's a conversion on the other side too. So be very careful with that, okay? This may be part of your board exam because it has something to do with not only math, not only dosage calculation, but also patient safety. You got questions? Yes, Richard. Would it ever like come in like an RX order and it'd be like 
uh, 60 mLs, and then you got to fill up how many units it is or something like that? Yeah, that's or a lot. Always too many years? Yeah, that's a lot, though. So that should um, alert you, okay? It can't be 60 ml, okay? Whoever wrote the prescription may have gotten it wrong or wrote it wrong. That would be in units. 60 ml would be how much? That's 6,000 units, right? Okay, so that's 6,000 units. A red flag right away. When in doubt, toss it out, okay? When in doubt, that's what we say in the IV room. When in doubt, toss it out. Toss that IV bag. It's not worth anybody's life, okay? When in doubt, ask your pharmacist. Verify with the pharmacist all the time, all the time. They won't get sick and tired of you, especially when you're new, okay? Any questions? I think altogether today is a good class. Um, the audio lectures in combination with the things that I didn't cover in the audio lecture, because this is hard to show in an audio lecture. Okay, that's why I told you there are things that I like in an audio lecture because it has something to do with repetition. You're remembering it, me saying it over and over. Okay, this one, I can't say this over and over and it'll just register like that. I got to show you, okay, in practice, the syringe, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and we did a good review of the diuretics as well today. Any questions? So I'll see you Friday. We're set on Friday. We're going to focus more on customer service on Friday. Um, we're going to do a review on customer service for Friday. Put in your calendars. Um, Tuesday will be final exam for pharmacology. Drug words and abbreviation week three. That's going to be on Tuesday too because that's the end of our classes. Monday, minus one, will be your customer service final exam. That's why I'd like to review you on customer service on Friday, okay? Are you still okay that we're meeting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Yes, it helps you, it helps you breathe, okay? This is the time when you go back to the audio lectures and listen to them, okay? Time to go back to audio lectures and listen to them. Those who missed the review for the final exam, Stormy, I sent the link in an announcement of that actual, you got it, okay, the study guide. So you should have taken notes. I think Marlene missed it too. Marlene, did you miss that study guide? There's a link in the announcement. Yes, perfect. Okay, so you got no reason that you missed that day and you don't know that the study guide is not available, okay? The study guide is available. I am not sure if I'd like to do that all the time. I'd like you to be present when I do a review and I don't like you to be absent anytime. Okay, um, get ready. I know a lot of you are going to the campus. Um, I'll see you guys on Friday. Just listen to the audio lectures. I'm not going to give you additional homework today. Okay, bye.